right Italiote champs and these M1 Max are absolutely amazing. I'm not going to say that they're disruptive, they're better than that. They're revolutionary and they deserve a lot of the praise they're getting. But today we're going to go beyond the hype because there's been so much BS I've heard about these M1 Max and hey, I have contributed to this. Well, the hype at least, I haven't told you any BS, but you know, I've heard stuff like, oh, you're never going to hear the fan. BS. You will hear the fan in the right environment. Pretty much every render I do, it hits the fan like 25% into a five minute video, like easily. We'll get to that in a sec. There's a major issue with mine. Major, major, major. Could be just a faulty unit. We'll get to that. And I've also heard BS like, oh, I'm going to throw away my MacBook Pro 16 because the M1 MacBook Pro is so much more powerful. That is BS. Let me make it clear. There are some tasks that the M1 Mac will absolutely destroy the MacBook Pro 16. Mostly hardware acceleration, HVC, you know, 10-bit, even just any HVC really. But I'm going to show you the limitations of the M1 compared to the MacBook Pro 16. Still today, if you're a video editor and you don't live inside, you know, Final Cut and HVC, HEVC. I'm going to show you why you still might want to go with the MacBook Pro 16. Is the MacBook Pro 16 still the king? I love that thing. And I ain't giving it up for an M1 for my daily, just because of some of the issues we'll get into in a sec. But I also want to make it clear as I did at the start, I love these M1 Macs. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Now I will not get into, oh, what's not compatible and stuff like that. For example, my audio interface will not work with this. Come on, Universal Audio. What are you doing? Get your drivers ready. But there are some real issues. We're going to go beyond the hype and you need to know about this stuff because, you know, if you just listen to everyone, oh, they're all unicorn and rainbows. These things, they're just amazing and nothing's wrong with them. They just kill everything. No, it's not the case. They're amazing, but let's get into it. Right, so one of the hyped up BS things you'll hear is these things are absolutely silent. You'll barely ever hear them. Well, that's only partly true. Editing, you'll probably never hear it. Most of the time you'll never hear it, of course on the MacBook Air you'll never hear it, but I can get these fans to kick in quite easily, and this fan is actually faulty. I hope this is not a common issue. It does take a little bit to get the fans going, usually what, 20% through one of my renders, we're at 12% now, but I can hear the fans slightly at the moment, and for whatever reason, whatever render I do with my, you know, 6K ProRes and HEVC 10-bit, for some reason it really cranks up and it really, you know, the fan is audible, so I'll just wait for it to kick in properly. It's pretty easy to tell when the fan's going to actually come on too. Basically, you can see there it's not using much of the CPU, but when it starts using the CPU and GPU together, that's when the fan will kick in. All right, so it's starting to use the CPU and GPU together now. I'm expecting to hear the fan pretty soon. And right on cue, the fan is kicking in. That's the thing, right? You got content that when you export it, it hits CPU and GPU together, the fan will kick in. But listen to this. Alright, so you can most definitely hear the fans there. It can actually get up to 48 decibels. Not that much uh, less quiet than the MacBook Pro 15 and 16. But what you could hear there is the fan rubbing. There is something wrong with that fan. And hopefully this isn't a widespread issue. New cooling system. And most people will never hear the fan unless you're really pushing it like this. And I wonder that maybe there are issues in other people's units, but they never hear the fan come on. So... Maybe we'll never know, but um, just something worth pointing out. I'll probably favour that it's probably just a bad unit, but we have to wait and see if other people get the same sort of issue. All right, so I'm using this Orica thumb drive SSD. Amazing thing. Link in the description. Trust me, you want to get that. 900 megabytes per second, read and write. As you can see there on the MacBook Pro 16. I'm going to put it on the M1 Mac in a sec, but I also want to screen record and do this test as well. All right, so let's screen record and do that hard drive test again and see what we're getting there. Still getting 800 megabytes per second. Right, and obviously it's right into the hard drive now, but still getting 900 megabytes per second read. So pretty much the same, right? I guess one of the things is USB is only on one side, right? So I can't put it on this side. I have to open this up and then connect my USB on this side. That is a little bit annoying. 
and people keep on complaining on the Macs, like, oh, you're not plugging it in, it's not fair and all. You don't have to plug the Mac in. But just for you whingers, I'm going to plug it in. So anyway, let's do that test here with the speed test here. Now, this is the exact same SSD that I connected to the MacBook Pro 16. And let's run it. Let's run it, baby. There you go. 500 megabytes, okay? 400 megabytes short of what it should be. But it gets worse than this. Let's have a look at its reads. 500 read. Okay, that's well short as well. So we'll just stop that. Now let's screen record. So we'll stop that, close it. Let's open her up again. Let's start again. 280 megabytes. What's going on? Now, at the start, it did read 500 when it was doing this test while I was screen recording. But now... It's just gone down to this 200. Weird. I don't know what it is with these USBs. And I've actually made a video. Do not do this on your M1 Mac or you're done. Check that video out. Many people are just saying that it is actually these USBs and not being able to boot from certain devices. I can tell you now that BenQ monitor that is made for the Mac, Thunderbolt 3, only runs at 30 hertz with these M1 Macs. That's an issue because that was made for the Mac. Now, it might be just a driver issue. Maybe they fix it with firmware, etc. But... It's a big issue now that when I'm plugging into some monitors, I'm only getting 30 hertz. Now, it's capable. It can do through display compression, you know, 6K HDR, doesn't it? So, yeah, it's interesting. It's just one of those things you need to know about. Hopefully, this gets fixed in the future, or at least we know what's compatible with it, what's not. All right, so I just want to jump in here and say I tested all my external SSDs. Only the Thunderbolt 3 was absolutely full speed, pretty much. The rest were all well short of what they can do. So there clearly is an issue here when you consider that these are the most popular, you know, SSDs on the market. All right, so let's find out some of the limitations of the M1 compared to the MacBook Pro 16, which everybody says they're thrown away because it's no good. There are a couple of mistakes people have made comparing the Intel MacBook Pro 16 versus the M1 Mac. First mistake, they'll export HEVC or 10-bit HEVC, and then they'll say, oh, it's so much faster than the MacBook Pro 16. I've got to say, it's amazing these things, right? That they can even be mentioned in the same breath as this laptop here. But what you're comparing there is not Intel versus Apple. What you're comparing is M1 processor versus T2 chip, because it uses the T2 chip if it's HEVC. Not all the time, but a lot of the time as it is, and using the T2 in conjunction with the GPU or whatever. So you've got to be careful you're not comparing M1 versus T2. Second thing is, with Big Sur, there have been big upgrades, right? Especially for HEVC. Like if you're using Catalina, it's going to be 100 times slower than if you're using Big Sur. Even on the MacBook Pro 16, there's a big difference between using Catalina and Big Sur just because of those upgrades. And the mistake people have been doing is comparing a Catalina MacBook Pro 16 versus Big Sur M1. They're just things to know. But as I said, to mention this in the same sort of breath, it's just amazing. And, you know, HEVC, it's just the king. That's what they're optimized for, these M1s. So let's just talk about some of the differences between these in, like, editing. What I see... When I edit on this compared to this, you just want the fans go crazy when you're editing. Final Cut, I don't know why. Premiere, it's not that noisy. Final Cut, wow, the fans kick in. This one is silent when you edit. But I notice when I edit on this, apart from the fan noise, that when I add transition, color grading, and stuff like that, this does pretty much all of that, no problems, except when I add a few more transitions, titles, etc. Since when I started, you know, adding in some B-roll, uh, some very simple titles uh, and, and so on and so forth. Things started to get a bit laggy. Um, I had uh, points where the timeline, if you were playing on the timeline to review a bit of footage, it, you'd lose the ability to pause for a while. You had some beach balls as well, didn't you? I did have a few beach balls as well. So it started getting janky. Shall I say, it wasn't a smooth experience anymore. I mean, this has eight gigabytes of HBM memory, a dedicated graphics. I don't know how much memory they're using on that for the video. This is the 16 gig model. I also noticed that when I use mixed content, so whatever, I've got my titles here and there, but then I'll have some mixed content. So I'll have different frame rates, I'll have different codecs like H.264, whatever. Then the exports on this are faster than that. But you also get the bigger screen, you get the more Thunderbolts, and they actually work properly for a start. And I will have a video on the next MacBook Pro 16. The next MacBook Pro 16, there's supposed to be two, an Intel version. So it should be Tiger Lake and 
RDNA 2 graphics and mid-year next year we'll talk about what's going to go into these things just subscribe for that so I still think now for compatibility if you want the big display if you're not going to be using Final Cut with no plugins this is still the way to go for a video editor I mean I've been doing projects on both of them and I just noticed that apart from the fan eyes as I said before this thing is amazing for video editing it's scrubbing speed and that and so is this this is actually amazing too but the screen's a bit pokey and I just noticed those th few things when I had titles and plus my plugins don't work etc so we'll have to wait on that front but I am very pumped for when they do you know the Apple Silicon MacBook Pro 16 wow add some more cores it's gonna fly and the problem is even this thing here is not full speed on that so maybe that's causing some of the issues that I'm getting with that so yeah what can I say some of the external peripherals are not working the booting from USB there's quite a few issues on that beyond the hype I still recommend if you want a beast video editing machine these things are amazing of course these are too if you're doing HEVC and you're only using Final Cut no plugins that's the way to go and yeah maybe plug it into a external monitor but make sure it does work at 60 hertz that's the only thing you've got to look out for there man what a choice right you've got two amazing laptops I love both of them and I'll give you a pro tip this one here with the dicky fan right do not go to Apple and say I've got a faulty fan just if it's in your return period which in Christmas it will be in your return period it's until January 9 you just go in and say no nah, I don't want to get your refund buy a new one because they'll pull that apart they'll butcher it so that's my pro tip anyway catch you in the next one guys tally ho